Hi everyone, I'm Shinji Inji. Welcome to the 8th episode of the 19 Debuts in Unity series. In this episode we are going to add post-processing effects to make the scene look better. In this episode we won't need any external asset. There are only a couple of options that we need to enable so that the post-processing effects can fully work. The first one is the Universal Render Pipeline asset, located in the Universal RP folder. In the Quality tab of the Inspector view, check HDR. This will make sure that the emissive component of the post-processing is shown in the game view. Then the last option that we need to enable is located on the main camera. Open the camera's game object and select the main camera. Go in the inspector and in the rendering tab check the post-processing. Without this enabled, you won't be able to use post-processing effects at all. Now it's possible to create the actual effect. Go in the hierarchy and create a new empty game object and call it FX Day. Make sure that the transform for the position are all set to zero, since we are going to make it a prefab later on. Click on Add Component and search for Volume. Make sure that the weight is set to 1 and the priority to zero. Click on New to create a new profile, which is going to be located in the Scenes folder. You can leave it there or create a new folder named Post Processing and then Profiles in which to put it by just dragging it. To add effects, click on the FX Day game object and in Spectral click on Add Override. To select the effect, click on Post Processing and choose Bloom as the first one. The properties that we need to activate are Threshold, Intensity and Scatter. Set the threshold to 0.8 and the intensity to 0.9. Leave the scatter to 0.7. Click again on Add Override and select this time the Vignette effect. Activate the intensity, smoothness and rounded properties and set the intensity to 0.2. Leave the smoothness to 0.2 and check the rounded box. For the last effect we are going to use the chromatic aberration. Activate the intensity and set it to 0.2. If you then disable and enable the FX Day game object, you'll be able to see the difference between the scene with and without effects. The chromatic aberration warps the borders of the image, while the vignette makes them darker. The bloom, on the other hand, makes the bright areas glow. Since we are going to use this profile for every scene of Do, we can make it into a prefab, so that we can just drag into the hierarchy when needed. To do so, go on the same folder that contains the profiles one and create a new one named Prefabs. Then just drag the FX Day inside it. Create a new empty game object, set the position to zero and call it FX. Lastly, drag the FX Day into the FX so that everything is in order. If you want to create a new profile for the night time, you just need to repeat this process creating a new game object in which to put a volume component where the priority is higher than the one for the daytime. This can also be achieved with a script that checks when the time property reaches a certain value and then increases the priority of the profile you want to use. This is the final result running the project. You can change the values and experiment yourself with all the effects that are available. Just keep in mind that the more effects you add, the heavier the project will become. This is all for this video, like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the next episode comes out and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the journey.